Hi, my name is Peter Brown. I'm the Social Studies Curriculum Coordinator for Oklahoma City Public Schools. Today, I'd like to talk to you about a strategy that's near and dear to my heart. Yes, we're talking about soaps, but we're not talking about Irish Spring. We're talking about a strategy that is going to help us break down some primary source documents. So let's go ahead and jump in to the strategy. So what is SOAPS? SOAPS is a strategy for analyzing primary source documents. So that it, we're, it, it's a systematic way to break down pieces of primary sources. Why should we do it? Well, we take a look here our standard two and three uh, <clears throat> for ELA, and then there's a specific third grade standard that talks about um, primary sources for social studies but really, we have the practices, and all throughout the practices, we can see primary source document and document analysis. These pieces are there. So what does SOAP stand for? SOAP stands for the speaker, the occasion, the audience, the purpose, and the subject. So we're going to take a, a, a little bit of a closer look. We're going to dive in deeper. So speaker. This is who is speaking helps us understand the document. So if it's me talking about social studies and history or my nine-year-old son talking about something from social studies or history, you're going to get two very different perspectives. So understanding who the speaker is helps us know more about what they're writing. Um, we want to know more about the speaker than just their name. Okay, so that's their name. That's all well and good. But what are, what are they doing? What is their expertise? Why are they writing about this? We can tell, uh, what can we tell about the speaker based on our um, the document and our knowledge of the person? And a person's background impacts what they're going to say. So if someone is a serf during the French Revolution, they're going to say, a peasant, they're going to say something vastly different than the king or queen would. So a person's background impacts their message, and knowing that helps us understand the primary source. The occasion, the time and place the current situation. This is what's going on. Now, this is something that I've had to deal with over and over and over with my students, where they would take occasion and they would give me the time and the date. Like, here's the, t here's the date, here's the place. But really what I want to know with this is, what is the context behind it? What's the context of the source? Um, what's going on? So, more than when is it, but what's going on in the world and how does that affect the author? If we're talking about <clears throat> cattle drives, we know the time period, and we know they're not driving cars, we know they're not using cell phones, so that's going to impact what how the author talks and what the author is experiencing. So then we have the audience. Who is the person writing to? Again, I write differently to my wife than I would to my boss. So who the audience is impacts how the writing goes. It could be to one person, could be to a large group, a small group, could be a speech, it could be any number of things. It could be a diary that someone writes for themselves. But this is going to be like, if you know the audience, that's going to help us interpret what the intent of the message is and what is the message. All right, purpose. What is the author trying to say? Why are they writing this or why are they saying this? It goes beyond, well, to inform or persuade. Like, one-word answers aren't going to work here. Now, it may be that they're trying to inform us, but what are they trying to inform us about? What are they going to try to persuade us to do? So really looking at what specifically is the goal. And that is something that our students desperately need. We need to take a look and say, why are they saying this? Because anyone can say anything, but why would they do it? There's a reason behind it. And getting people to think about the thought processes behind the why is so critical. Lastly, we have subject. What is the source about? So, what is the historical importance? Uh, or what does what historical importance does this document reveal? What's going on? Why do we care? What is the big idea? So now we're going to take a look at a sample document, and it is a third grade document. Maybe here we go. <laughs> Sorry about that. So George Duffield's diary from May 1866. Swimming cattle today, we worked all day in the river and at dusk. Got the last beef over and am now out of Texas. This day will be long remembered. There was one of us who drowned today. 
several close escapes, including me. Stampede tonight, hunting cattle. Men are tired and want to leave. We are in Indian country now. Hard rain and wind, beef run. We had to be on the horseback on horseback all night. I've not got the blues, but I'm in a fix. So now we're going to take this primary source and we're going to break it apart using soaps. So about this document, it aligns with standard 3.3.7 talking about cowboys and pioneers and cattle drives. Um, when you introduce soaps and when you're doing it with soaps with younger students. It should be done as a whole group, and you should be modeling your thinking for the students. And that doesn't mean you can't bring them in and have them provide examples or get their thoughts, but really, as you're going through modeling, I think this because of this, or how, what do we know about George Duffield, and really get them thinking about how you think and work through the different sections. <clears throat> so, my process would be to read this as a whole group and then if students come across a word they're not sure about to let me know and we'll highlight it so we hide in the, those in green and what i'm going to do first before i talk to the students and give have them go look up the definitions i'm going to remind them of some strategies that we have like can we look this up in context can we look and see what does dusk mean by looking at the sentence we worked all day in the river and at dusk so can we figure that out and i would try to work with the students that way to see if we can figure it out um, stampede tonight oh there can be some kids who know what stampede is but if a student doesn't know what a stampede is it it's important to create an environment where the kid uh, the student can say well i'm not sure what that is so finding ways that you can do that in a non-threatening manner and then you can talk about it um, I've not got the blues, and so there's some figurative language and talking about got the blues. What does that mean? So now, if my, oh, there we go. We're going to highlight all the information about the speaker in yellow. So, one, George Duffield. Surprise, surprise, we know now it's George Duffield is writing this, right? Now, I, again, had students who would say, speaker, George Duffield, and I would respond with them, and like what is the big idea why do we care why do we care who george duffield is and so then they have to show me what more they know about him so i highlighted swimming cattle and he's on horseback so those are two clues that can help us understand okay george duffield and, and reading all this he is a cowboy and that's important because being a cowboy and the job that he's doing that tells us a lot about the amount of time he has available. What is he? What is he doing? And um, you know that lets us know a lot more about him. So now we've done that. Let's look at the occasion again. We have the occasion lined out for us. May 1866. Where is he? He's out of Texas. He said he's worked all day in the river out of Texas. So knowing Oklahoma history, we know the Red River is the border between Oklahoma and Texas. So we can assume he's coming into Oklahoma. We know it's May of 1866. So what I would do is say, okay, 1866, what do we know about this time period? I don't need to know what's going on every year. But if we know the time period, so this is before cell phones, this is before TV, this is before cars. What is it like? And so if they can understand that, they can understand more of this message. So really have a discussion about that. The other thing is May in Oklahoma. Well, we know what happens in May in Oklahoma. We all have, or many people have storm shelters because they're aware of what happens in May in Oklahoma. You have severe weather. And in the document, he actually says hard rain and wind. So we know more about what he's going through because we know what it, things are like in Oklahoma. So now purpose. Oh, hang on. Audience. There we are. Audience. I like that in purple. And it's a diary. Now, this is an interesting discussion because who is a diary really for? It could be that he wrote it for himself. It could be that he wrote it because he wanted his children to remember it. He 
could be that it, he's writing the diary and it's going to turn that in for uh, some sort of pay or whatever. He's showing them, here's my log of work. So a diary can be used, can have any number of audiences. Um, never, my students were famous for saying, me. And I'm like, really? You know, uh, Emperor Constantine was like, hey, some weird kid 1800 years later is going to read this. This is to you. No. He had someone more directly to to read that. You know, he had an intent for someone much closer to his time period than you. And that's a discussion we have uh, that we would have with our students and really understanding, okay, there's always someone that they're intending this message for. And who is it? So now purpose. So I'm going to apologize. This has the light blue in it. That's for our next slide, so ignore this. But really... The purpose, this day will long be remembered. He wrote this down because he wants it, wants, and he doesn't want to forget. He wants to make sure everyone knows, or at least he knows, or whoever read, reads this knows, what happened that, that time in May of 1866. So we know now, okay, it, to inform, but to inform about what's going on on the cattle drive and what life of a cowboy is like. And so now we're going to find evidence that supports the subject. So he said, there was one of us who drowned today. Several close escapes, including me. Hard rain and wind. Beef ran. So we can highlight that. And as, as you're doing this with your class, walk them through as a class and highlight as they, as they mention it. And then talk to the class and say, do we think this is really evidence for the subject? Yes, yes, yes. Or no, no, no. And then say, okay, why? Why does this evidence support our subject? Why is this evidence tell us the main idea of the document? So really working through their thought processes on this as well. So we're not just showing them, here's how you do work, but here's how you think about these primary sources. Here's how you can break it down and dive deeper. So now we're going to put it together in a chart. There we go. So we have who is the speaker, what is the occasion, who is the audience, purpose, and subject. So this chart right here, I color-coded the, uh, the boxes. Students could do, you could do this any number of ways. If you have younger students, you could have the, just bring in the evidence and put the evidence in the bo box. I would work together and say, okay, now everyone, let's say, who is the speaker? Well, we know the speaker is George Duffield, so I would type that in there. Sorry, and then what do we know about George Duffield? And they could say, well, we know he's, we can infer he's a cowboy on a cattle drive. And then we can, that opens a good conversation about inferences. What makes us think he's a cowboy on a cattle drive? And we say, well, take a look at our evidence again. So we've got that down, all right? So then, in theory, there we go. The occasion, what's going on in time period? Again, May of 1866, before phones or computers. We know he's on a cattle drive. We know it's in May, so strong storms can can happen in Oklahoma in the springtime. Audience. Who is he writing this to? Again, it's a diary. He's either writing for himself, his children, or someone to see long after he's gone. And you know what? It worked. <laughs> because here I, here I am today talking to you about it. Um, in 2021. I had to think about it for a minute. It's been a long year already. Um, purpose. Why is he writing it? He's writing this so whoever reads his diary remembers the cattle drive and the events that happened. So he wants to make sure everybody understands this is what went on on that cattle drive. And then subject. I said I, I summarized it saying there are many dangers and difficult on a cattle drive. Cowboys have a hard time. There are other ways that you could summarize it, and I think your students will have interesting ways of summarizing it as well. But you don't have to use it this way, but I, that's, how, that's how I summarized it. So here is my contact information. Let me get my recording out of the way here. Um, here's my information. Uh, feel free to email me anytime, pdbrown at okcps.org, or you can call me, 587-0293. I'm always glad to talk to you. I'm always glad to help where I can. 
please feel free to reach out. Thank you so much for your time today.